Hi everyone, so we're straight back on with the Audi A3. I just want to say a massive thank you for all the comments and the support on the reveal video on this one. So in today's video, what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be stripping down all the exterior damage and also the driver's front suspension. So then we can see if there is any more structural damage on this one. And also, I have, I've got majority of the parts what you can visually see, like the bonnet, wing, headlight, bumper. Obviously, there is going to be some more like little things that's damaged behind all this stuff. So at least then we can see what I need to order, etc. So I'm going to start off by putting the car on axle stands, so we can get the wheels off, so we can get the bumper off. So I'll quickly get on time lapse now. So we've got the wheels off now, it's on axle stands. I thought I'd show you the good side. So on the wheel arch liner, it's held in like majority of VAG cars. T20 torque screws all over. There's a 10 millimeter plastic nut. Two plastic kind of rivet style fixings on the sill. There is, let me just get lower. There's one screw that goes underneath, plastic clip that goes through on the engine cover, the under tray, sorry. There is a few that goes through the under tray into the wheel arch liner. I just thought I'd show you what I'm doing. So I'm gonna get that passenger side off now so we can get the bumper off. <laughs> The passenger wheel arch liner now removed. I've just loosely put the uh, most of the screws back just so they don't get lost. So now I'm going to attempt to take the driver's side off, which, as you know, it's crushed that corner. I might have to tear it up. It's broken anyway. These are not too dear. I think retail is 35 plus fat for a new wheel arch liner, which ain't, it's not a bad price at all. So I'm going to get that one off now. So we can get the bumper off, then we can take the wing off. So yeah, just bear with me. That's the remains of the driver's headlight. One thing I might be lucky, the module. Looks like it's damaged around it. The plug's still on there. Obviously you've got the three screws. We'll see though, because I do have a brand new, genuine Audi headlight. But the reason I just wanted to show you this, this is the plug that goes onto the car harness. It did not damage it, as you can see. Got very lucky there. Obviously, I've got a few wires I need to repair on here. So that would be crash sensor and the horn. So I'm just going to get the wing off now.
So that's the majority of all the parts now removed that was damaged. There's just a couple of little bits like the wing bracket just here. But bonnet wise, now the headlight, damaged headlight and wings out the way, on these A3s, you don't just have one latch in the middle, you've got one either corner as well. A bit like how BMWs and Mercedes are. The bonnet does shut now. Obviously we're not gonna be using this bonnet. Just thought I'd show you. They all shut on all three now. So the structural damage on this A3, as this one is a Category S, and yeah, they've got it correct this time. As you would have seen, I've had a few Cat S's that should have been Cat N, is this piece here, so the top of the apron. So I think I did show you on the reveal video. This piece should be nice and smooth like that, where it joins up to the second piece. On here, it has been pushed back. So what will happen on this piece, uh, the body shot will do this. They'll give this a pull, get it straight. We're not going to be using this one as I've got a genuine brand new replacement. That was quite cheap, to be honest. I think that was around about 14 or 16 pound. Yeah, so get this pulled out so it's straight. Then they can drill out the spot welds and put the new piece on. The rest of the apron is all good. Because if you remember rightly, the wing did get pushed back in this area just here. So chassis leg, I've unbolted the fuel filter housing. Now we can get a good look. It's nice and straight, and then that goes to the engine mount, and behind the engine mount where it goes towards the bulkhead, if the camera will focus, that's the best I can get it to focus, so it's all straight here, and then it, where it curves round to go to, towards the bulkhead. So what we're going to be doing now, I'll actually show you, because I'll show you all the parts I've got. So basically I did put a space saver wheel on this, just to manoeuvre the car around. The wheel was sitting like this, looked like it had loads of camber, so what I've got here... You've probably seen my other videos. If I've got suspension damage, I replace everything on that corner. And I don't tend, I will not buy like a second hand complete leg off eBay because you don't know how many miles the suspension components have got. You know, the bushes could be no good or the ball joints, or it could have come off a damaged car. You could bolt it all up and your wheel could still be sitting like that. So I just, you probably, you know me by now, replace with the best parts possible, either genuine or the best companies I can get, like SKF is a brilliant brand for wheel bearings and suspension components. So I've got a genuine brand new suspension arm. I actually got that very cheap. It was on eBay, to be honest. Uh, I think I paid 50 pound for that. With genuine wishbones, they don't come with a ball joint. So I've got an SKF ball joint just here. I've got a brand new hub, brand new Monroe shock. What I do basically, I go on parts link, parts link 24, put the car VIN number in, and that will give me all the genuine part numbers for all the suspension parts. I go on auto dock, copy and paste, and then that will cross-reference to the equivalent of a, like an SKF part. So that's how I managed to find out all these parts, for example. From TPS, new pinch bolt for the hub. There are new bolts for the wishbones, as these are stretch bolts, so a one-time use. Brand new hub on this one, which is good. I don't need to press the wheel bearing in. This actually bolts up, they're stretch bolts as well. Three bolts holding it onto the hub and then one, one bolt for the dry shaft. I've got a brand new top mount and bearing. A tie rod, so the track rod and the track rod end. Anti-roll bar link, brand new shock. I'm not changing the spring, spring is all good. So I'm gonna get this all stripped off now and get all the new stuff put on. I am about to put this on time-lapse, removing the suspension, but if you need to know what tools you need to do this job on a, a A38V, so the top mount, underneath the scuttle panel, you've got three 13 millimeter bolts, one here, one at the back, and when you come round, one just here. Then the hub nut, or hub bolt on this, it's a 24 millimeter socket, but 12 point. Anti-roll bar link is an 18 millimeter socket, same with suspension arms, two bolts, 18 millimeter, and one that goes through under here. Pinch bolt, I'm not touching as of yet, not on this shock, because obviously I'm replacing it all. I'm just gonna take the whole leg out, undo the dry shelf bolt, undo these two bolts and pull it all out. Caliper is for the slider bolts, they're 13 millimeter top and bottom. Then the carrier bolts are a 21 millimeter, which is a, there's two top and bottom. 
this bracket here for the brake hose and the ABS sensor, one 10 millimeter, and the ABS sensor bolt, I have slackened this one off. These can be a bit of a pain. Just make sure all the debris is out of that as it is a Torx T30. But yeah, that's pretty much everything you need to know. I'm gonna get on time lapse now and get all this off. So I just wanted to say this is not a sponsored video from Easy Manuals. I just wanted to share some very helpful information. So when I'm repairing these cars, obviously when I'm doing like suspension work or even like the seat belts, etc., the bolts do have a Pacific torque spec. So how I get all that information, this website, easymanuals.co.uk. So they sell genuine workshop manuals for majority of cars and manufacturers, models, and the prices start from 14 99 for a PDF version, or I think it's 25 pounds and they'll send you out a USB stick with the files. So I've already purchased a workshop manual for the Audi A3. As I'm doing the driver's suspension today, replacing everything with new, I need to know all about the torque specs for the bolts. So that's the wheel bearing with the hub, the hub bolts, and these are the bolts, three bolts that bolt the bearing to the hub. So I need to know for number nine, the torque spec, so it just states, always renew if removed. It's 70 newton meters and 90 degrees. So I know they're a stretch bolt anyway, because obviously 90 degrees, that's a stretch bolt. But yeah, I just thought I'd show you. So on these workshop manuals, it's not just steering, suspension, brakes. It is everything from body repairs to wiring diagrams, fault finding. Honestly, it is worth the 15 pound all day long. It even shows you the part numbers for the genuine Audi tools. You know, some jobs will be like a specialized tool. But doing the jobs, it is literally step by step with photos. Honestly, very easy. I'll just try and show you now. You, if you get what I'm trying to show you, but yeah, very worth the money. Also the MacBook Pro, I bought this to learn how to edit on the laptop because I've just been doing it on my phone. Still haven't had time, so I need to learn how to edit on this. But I've got it ready. Yeah, so that's where I get my torque specs from. So now I've got everything all prepared. So I've got the brand new hub and the SKF wheel bearing. That does come with all the bolts to mount that to the hub. They're an M12 multi-spline. So I've got the torque wrench now set up as well, which is 70 newton meters and then 90 degrees on these three bolts. So I'm gonna get this now assembled. So I've just removed and installed the new inner tie rod. Here's the original one. I did mark a bit of paint on the threads where the original track rod end was just so I can get roughly straight until I can get it tracked up when the car's finished. So that's uh, now being torqued up to 100 newton meters. The rest I am gonna put on time lapse as it does look like it's gonna rain. I need to crack on because this car needs to go to the body shop. So I've got the steering rack gator on now. That's the original one, there was no damage to it. I've got this spring clamp on on the end, but the inner end, I forgot to buy a new, um, it's basically like, a, like the CV boots, these clamps, so I can do that at a later date, before the car's finished. Track will end loosely on, once all the suspension's on, I can then tighten this one up. I've just put the wishbone on loosely, ball joint's not on, uh, as you can see, the bolts are loose. I can't talk this up until it's all back together and then I can put some sprung weight on. So basically jacking underneath the suspension as if the car was on the floor. Then I can talk it up to spec. So now I'm gonna get all the shock and hub on the car now. I've already built up the brand new shocks. That's the original spring gator, brand new top mount. You see me build up the hub on time-lapse. So a brand new hub and wheel bearing and talked up to spec. So removing the original ABS sensor from the original hub, I got this, the bolt out T30, that come out nice and easy. But the ABS sensor, it did snap, uh, which means, you know, my mistake, 
I need to replace it. So this genuine is retail price is £80 plus VAT. I got this on eBay for £18 with £2 delivery. So for my, you know, it's a mistake, but £20 I can live with that. So I just wanted to show you one thing as well. So if you've got an Audi A3, S3, RS3, 8V or a Mark 7, 7.5 Golf, if you're doing lowering springs or fitting new shock and spring, this is the bearing for the top mount. As you can see, it's tapered. What I'm trying to get at, there's a cutout just here and there's that mark just there. So that sits on top there. But what you need to do, two seconds, you need to, there's two arrows just here. They need to be the direction of the vehicle. So that one's forward and that one's backwards. So if you installed it like that, you're not, you're gonna get too much camber, you're not gonna line the car correctly. So you need to make sure you fit the top mount correctly in the right direction. So I'm just gonna get all this installed onto the car now. Uh, one last thing as well. So for the top mount, I've got three brand new bolts as these are, they're, they're not torqued up very high. I think they're something like 15 Newton meters, but they are a stretch bolt because there is a degree you have to do after. <music> apologize if there's not too much footage uh, it's camera angles I'm suffering with because uh, obviously I'm working on the floor at the minute so I've just put the track rod end in loosely just so the hub the, the steering knuckle doesn't move about I took the dry shaft that's not in I've loosely put the nuts on the ball joint so it's in place where it needs to be then you'll probably see me with a spanner six millimeter allen key into the ball joint to lock it so it doesn't spin Start tightening it up with an 18 millimeter spanner, then put a jack underneath the ball just to put some pressure. And now I've torqued it up to 60 newton meters, which I'll just try and show you. That's all torqued up. So what I need to do now, I'm just gonna loosen the bolts on the ball joint so then I can drop this part where it goes into the wishbone to get the dry shaft through. I will just clean up this surface just here, get that through. And literally just the last bits like anti-roll bar link, etc. Then put some weight on it and torque everything up to specs. Right, so what I'm going to show you, just excuse my handwriting. So basically the workshop manual's on my phone. So all the torque specs I'm recording on my phone, so I need them. So I've just written them down. I'll show so you Everything now. that I need to torque up on the driver's suspension is all written down here. For example, suspension arm bolts, 70 newton meters and 180 degrees. The track will end that nut. That's at 20 newton meters, 90 degrees. And then for example, the bolt that goes through the drive shaft, what you'd class as a hub nut, or let's say a hub bolt on this one, that's 200 newton meters and 180 degrees. You're gonna struggle to do the, well, the 200, you'll probably be a riot on actual stand, but you're gonna struggle to do the 180 degree. So normally try and get as much as 200 as you can when it's on actual stand, then get the wheel on, but you want to take the centre cap out, so then you can get that 24 millimetre multi-spine socket on the bolt, and then when it's on the floor, then do the additional 180 degrees. So what I've got here as well, I'll just get it out of my pocket. I've just got a paint pen, basically. So the degrees, I can just make a, a little mark on the bolt, and then a little mark where I need it to go. So then I know, you know, if it's 90 or 180 degrees. So I'm going to get everything on now. A3's now being dropped off to the body shop. I've got the A3's headliner in my A4 just to keep it safe. Uh, for some reason, you would have seen me talking up the suspension parts on time lapse. After that, I did have another clip. I don't know what's happened to it if I deleted it or I've 
didn't press record and I thought I did. Basically, that was uh, putting the wheel on, dropping it on the floor, doing the 180 degrees on the hub bolt, showing that the wheel is now straight. Yeah, I don't know what's happened to it. And another annoying part of today's video was when I was dismantling the original suspension, I put on time lapse to remove the whole leg. Somebody rang me about halfway through, which stopped the time lapse, which was quite annoying because I already removed everything. Had a look on the playback and yeah, halfway through. So I weren't going to then reinstall the old stuff to then take off because these YouTube videos do take a fair amount of time to film. So I hope you understand. So I've just come back from TPS. I've just picked up a fairly large order. Uh, majority of all this stuff is for the next rebuild. So there's a bonnet here, wing, headlight. It's a bumper in that one. A few other little bits. Have a guess what it is. If you are following me on Instagram, you would have seen it on a story. Previously, I do put a fair amount of sneak peeks on the stories. So what I've just picked up for the A3, that's the foam that goes on the crash bar. The foam was only damaged on one corner, but can you see there's this little channel that goes along? This is the pedestrian sensor. So you have two sensors either end that pushes in here with this silicon pipe. So normally when an accident, it normally breaks this off and obviously you'll get an airbag light on, etc. But yeah, I just thought I'd show you. I forgot to show you as well with the A3 panels. So that was a brand new genuine bumper wing and the yeah, so the bonnet come from Silver Lake. I, I was a bit nervous as I I've, don't really order parts, well, panels online, for example, eBay, etc. as half the time they could come damaged in Courier. But one good thing about Silver Lake, the bonnet actually got delivered in their own van, which is uh, racked out with uh, panel racks, so no damage at all. That retail on that from dealer was 588 plus VAX. It's aluminium. I paid 250 so... Yeah, I just thought I'd let you know, as I've already dropped all those bits off to the uh, body shop. While I'm showing you brand new parts, I just thought I'd show you. This is a genuine brand new headlight for the Audi A3. I've also received today from the airbag team the seat belts and the curtain. So I've already been filming the next episode for after this one. So I've got those bits now. The car's at the body shop. When it comes back, I can get the seat belts and airbags back in. The seat's at the, actually at the upholstery. I think that's ready now. I've just got to pick it up. So I'm already ahead for the next video. Yeah, so I have got a new pro uh, rebuild project. As you've seen, that's what all those panels are for. I'm get The car got dropped off. Today's the 9th of October, Sunday. I'm just finishing this clip now. The car got dropped off Wednesday from Chester Copart. Uh, the car is now at the unit. As obviously now, if you don't know or you haven't seen on Instagram or the community posts on YouTube, I do have... I am renting a space in a unit now, which I've got the keys, the car's there. We're just waiting for some lights to get installed as it is a little bit dark in there at the current minute. Uh, so that should, the lights should be installed sometime this week. And yeah, so this little car, it's not the replacement for the A6. I have been bidding on a f quite a few cars, to be honest. And it seems to be me and one other person outbidding each other. So I haven't replaced the A6 yet, but I've got this new little rebuild. It's a fairly new car low mileage and that will be two maximum three episodes the first episode will be reveal video and a complete strip down on the first video so hopefully now with the unit i can get cracking on i ain't got to worry about if it's getting dark or winter go in the unit shut the door turn the lights on and start recording so that's an end for today's video let us know in the comments what you thought and also if you did like today's video smash that like button as it really does help with the YouTube algorithm. And if you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing as it really does help with the channel. Also, give us a follow on Instagram as I do regularly put sneak peeks as Instagram stories. It's Nathan underscore highly. And if you need to email me, it's Nathan underscore highly at outlook.com. All the information anyway is will be on the description of today's video. But yeah, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.